Okay, hello everyone. I'm Amir Fali Nejad, and today I'm going to talk about the one-shot free view neural talking head synthesis for video conferencing paper. This paper has been published in 2021 by the NVIDIA group, so let's hop into it. In the past years, due to the pandemic and COVID, video conferencing has played one of the major keys and roles in our lives. Statistics shows that the usage of these applications have increased significantly during this time. However, there are some limitations and problems. One of them is limited bandwidth. Since currently there are a lot of users using these applications, there is barely enough bandwidth for all of the users around the world. Other than that, poor infrastructure in some regions. As you guys already know, internet speed is not equally distributed around the world. Other than that, there are some additional problems such as no eye t contact during calls and other than that, camera and video are located in completely different screen. For example, right now that I'm presenting, you can notice that I'm not looking directly into the camera when I'm looking at my screen. So this is also one of the problems that in telecommunication systems we are facing. However, this paper solved most of these problems, and we are going to dig into the details to see how did they exactly solve those problems. So let's go in. Let's first level set on the notations during this presentation. Let S be an image of a person referred as the source image. Let D's be a talking head video called a driving video where DI are the individual frames and N is a total number of frames. Our goal is to generate an output video wise where the identity in YI is inherited from the motion derived from DI and the source image of S. Depending on the S, the goal can be either one of the two broader deep learning tasks that I'm going to discuss. One of them is if the person in the source image S is the same as the driving video DI, then it's a video reconstruction task. The generated output video, or also known as YI, still takes the identity information from S and the motion from DI. However, if the person in S is not the same as in DI, then it's a motion transfer task. Okay, now let's take a top-down view over the model that they used in this paper. In the very beginning, we pass a source image and a driving video to this network, which there's a model that extracts the source features from the source image and another model that which we're going to discuss in the next slides will extract the 3D source features key points from the source image and the driving video. With By combining these two and extracting some other features, we are able to detect the 3D flow field. And by combining those flow fields with the source features, we are going to warp them in a new space, which we could also call them as the warp features. And by applying those and sending them to the generator, we are going to have our output image. The proposed method could be divided into three major steps. One, source image feature extraction. Two, driving video extraction. And third, the video generation part, which I'm going to discuss in the next slides. In the source image feature extractor, three separate neural networks are used to extract the identity specific information. The networks are 3D Appearance Feature Extractor, 3D Canonical Key Point Extractor, and the Head Pose Expression Extractor, which by using the input image, the Appearance Feature Extractor, or also known as Network F, is going to extract the features from the image to a new space. The other network takes the input image and outputs a bunch of 3D points in the canonical space, and the last network is going to extract the pose, which is the rotation matrix and the translation matrix, and also the expression deformation information from that image. And by combining the rotations and the expression deformation by using the canonical key points, we are able to classify and detect where the K source key points and the Jacobians are located. Okay, let's go and hop into the details of these networks. First of all, we go to the 3D Appearance Feature Extractor, or also known as Network F. Using a neural network F, the source image S is mapped to a 3D Appearance Features 
or also called as volume FS. The network F consists of multiple downsampling blocks followed by number of 3D residual blocks to compute the 3D feature volume. Now, in the 3D canonical keypoint extractor, or also known as network L, a set of K canonical keypoints and their Jacobians are extracted from image S. The Jacobians represent how a local patch around the key points can be transferred into a patch in another image via an affine transformation. The authors have used a unit style encoder decoder to extract the canonical key points. Our canonical key points are formulated to be independent of the pose and the expression changes. They should only contain a person geometry signature such as the shape of the face, nose, or mouth. A pose estimation network H is used to estimate the head pose of the person in MHS. It is parameterized by a rotation matrix RS and a tra transition vector called VAT. The rotation matrix in practice is composed of three different metrics called YAL, pitch, and roll. Expression deformation estimator network is called delta. It is used to estimate the deformation of the key points from the neutral expression. Thus, there are K3D deformation key points called delta. Note that the author have used a common backbone with shared weights for both H and delta. And you could also see in the model on the right that they used the same structure and model for them. However, in the last layers, they applied different fully connected layers to separate these parameters from each other. We should also note that the same architecture is used to extract motion related information from the driving video as well. Using the information from all three architectures, the authors have proposed a transformation T to obtain the final 3D key points and their Jacobians from the source image. T is applied to the key points and TAJ to the Jacobians, such as the formula that you could see over here, which RS is extracted from the head pose network and TS is the same and Delta has been extracted from the expression deformation network. And by using the canonical key points XC, we are able to finalize and compute the final 3D key feature locations. The driving video is used to extract the motion related information to this and head pose estimation network and the expression deformation estimator network are used. Note that the 3D feature extractor and the canonical key point extractor networks are not used in this section. Instead of extracting the canonical key points from the driving MHD, we reuse the X and J's which were extracted from the source image. This is because the face in the output image must have the same identity as the one in the source image. There is no need to recompute all these things over again. Using the identity specific informations, the motion related information and the final 3D key points and their Jacobians are computed from the driving video. The same transformations are also used in this section. As you could see, we could calculate the X and J's from the canonical key points extracted from the, the driving video, the rotation, translation, and the expression deformation. And by applying the transformation over these features, we are able to detect the new locations of these 3D key points. These 3D key points and their Jacobians are derived for every frame in the driving video. Since identity specific information is used for computing final 3D key points and Jacobians for the driving video frames. We can provide user specific rotation and translation matrix to change a person head pose. Our pro this approach allows manual changes to the 3D head pose during synthesis as well. The 3D key points and Jacobians extracted from the source image and the driving video frames are used to estimate the warping flow maps. This flow map, or also known as the omega k, is generated based on the kth key points.
using the first order approximation. This flow field is used to warp the source features and it's basically called the omega k fs. And for this task, they use the paper called the first order motion model for image image animations. These warped features are fed to a motion field estimator network called M, which is a 3D unit style network. As shown in the figure, two outputs are estimated using this network, mask M and occlusion O. Softmax activation is used to obtain the flow composition mask M, which consists of K 3D masks. They are again combined with K warping flow maps to obtain the final composition flow field omega. This is finally used to obtain the warped source features. Warping leads to occlusion. A 2D occlusion mask called O is predicted to be inputted to the generator and the next step. The authors have used a generator network called G that takes the warp 3D source feature maps and first projects them back into the 2D feature space. This is then multiplied with the occlusion mask O followed by a series of 2D residual blocks and upsampling layers to obtain the final. To summarize so far, we have source MHS and a driving video D. The task is to generate an output video called Y, such that it has the identity-specific information from MHS and motion-specific information from frames D. To obtain identity-specific information, different neural networks are used, and the same goes for the motion-specific information. These pieces of information are used to obtain K3D key points and their Jacobians for both MHS and frames D. These key points in Jacobians are then used to warp the source appearance features, also known as FS, extracted from S, from which they generate the final output image using a generator G. The total loss function is a sum of a bunch of smaller loss functions, which I'm going to talk about in the next slides. Okay, first we're going to talk about the perceptual loss, or also known as LP. Perceptual loss is commonly used in image reconstruction tasks. In short, a pre-trained VGG network is used to extract features from both the ground truth and the reconstructed image. The L1 distance is computed between the features. The features are extracted from multiple hidden layers of varying resolutions from the network, as you can see in the image on the slides. For the GAN loss, the authors have used the patch GAN, which is pretty similar to a normal GAN. However, instead of one scalar as the output, they will generate a n by n patch that decides uh, for every part of this image what value it's going to have. And we all, alongside that, they also use a hinge loss. So. About the equivalence loss, or also known as LE, this loss ensures the consistency of the estimated key points. Let XD be the detected key points from the image D. When a known transformation is applied to the image, the detected key points should be transformed in the same way. Then we calculate the L1 distance and try to minimize it. So basically what this loss is trying to say is that we have an input image and after we apply uh, transformation over that image, we assume that the 3D feature extraction that we know where they are located in the 3D space should also somehow be transformed in that space. And we are trying to minimize the distance between these two. And we do this for both the X's and the Jacobians. The key point prior loss, or also known as LL. They penalize the key points if the distance between any pairs of the key points is below some specific threshold that we call DT over here, or if the mean depth value deviates from a present target value ZT. In other words, where this Z function extracts the mean depth value of the key points. This ensures the key points are more spread out and used more effectively. In this paper, they assume that the DAT is going to be 0 0.1 
and z of t is going to be 0 0.33. Head pose loss, or also known as LH. They compute the L1 distance between the estimated head pose, known as RD, and the one predicted by a pre-trained pose estimator network, which they call RD bar, which they treat the RD bar as the ground truth of the training part. In other words, the L1 distance between these two is computed by the sum of the difference between the Euler angles of the matrices. Last but not least, the deformation prior loss, or also known as L delta. Since the expression deformation is the deviation from the canonical key points, their magnitude should not be too large. To ensure this, we put a loss on their L1 norm, as you can see over here. For this paper, they use the Voxcelib2 and the Talking Head 1KH dataset for the training, and they use Atom Optimizer for training as well with a learning rate of 0 0.0002. At first, they try to train the model over images that are 256 and 256 for 100 epochs, and after that, they fine tune it with larger images for around 10 epochs. For the, the conclusion, as we can see, the results were quite promising. And the point is that they were able to reconstruct such realistic videos just by transferring this small amount of data. Let's see. In the paper, they assumed that K, or the number of key points, were 20. And there are three features for the eigen angles and three for the translation. So basically, by sending about 66 data points, they were able to reconstruct this whole face, assuming that we already have sent it the feature source uh, in the first place. And by using those 66 features, they are able to create one single frame. What does this tell us? It tells us that by using a small amount of data and with limited bandwidth, we are still able to create photorealistic results. And they compared their results with the cases which they use other methods to reconstruct the image but in lower bandwidth. And as you could see, their results outperformed them significantly. And that's about the presentation. Thank you for your time and watching. Have a good day.